What's going on guys, Tactical Bacon here and welcome to episode one of Server Spotlight where basically I'm going to be using what little popularity I have on YouTube to kind of shed some light on some servers that I feel at least should be getting a bit more attention, should be getting a bit more players uh, just because of certain things here and there that I like. Keep in mind that this is purely subjective and also that I'm not going into this earning any kind of in-game stuff or any kind of money or anything from these servers. I'm simply doing it to promote servers that I feel are good. So let's go ahead and get started with the first one, which is the server you guys saw me playing on yesterday, which is the Professionals Playground server. Yes, it is an Epoch server, it's not an Overpox server, but as I've said in a few videos here recently, uh, it seems like Epoch is starting to make a comeback in popularity, so why not? So to kind of dive into the features of the server, I'm pulling this right from their website. It is a fully militarized server, has a wide variety of vehicles from jets to tanks, BTRs, uh, but just because they have them doesn't mean that they're easy to acquire, which means I'm assuming that they're probably pretty expensive. You could probably either buy it at the Bandit or Hero trader um i can't exactly remember if they had like a specific kind of like exotic trader like some servers i've seen in the past have had where you can get like as 50s and rocket launchers and shit like that from them but they're like 1.5 million and i'm not exactly sure what the exchange rate to gold bars would be because Obviously, it's Epoch, it uses bars of gold and silver and all that kind of stuff, so yeah. Moving on to the plot pole, there is a 50 meter plot pole instead of a 30 meter plot pole radius. Not that uncommon. Uh, bases have a 10 day maintenance period, basically. Uh, also, not very uncommon. Most, most servers have that kind of maintenance feature going on. Um, bases have a max of 400 parts, but will get more expensive to uh, maintain as you build more. Vehicles locked in the plot pole radius are on god mode, which is good to know, I did not know that. Let's see, plot management, pro building with vectors and degrees, combat logging makes a crate on the ground with the player's gear. Wow, that's kind of interesting. Uh, moving on, 20 plus missions plus rubble, towns, weapons crates, building supplies, and UN crates that spawn randomly. That is always good uh, as far as like building supplies and weapons crates goes. I know they have the gold missions where you can actually earn gold bars or get gold bars and uh, possibly even a briefcase out of the crate itself. Expert mission, okay. They have a lot of the same uh, missions that you would see on most Epoch servers. Um, I haven't seen any of the bandit or hero missions. Uh, they're instead of a uh, solid colored circle there's more of like a grid circle very reminiscent of the uh the epoch mission system active admins uh when i was on the other day for the uh two and a half to three hours that i was on this server uh sunday they were doing quite a bit of stuff uh they were doing an admin event i think they did two admin events in the time that i was on uh, the admins are, are very active and uh, very responsive to uh, you know, any kind of issues that uh, people in the community or on the server have. Uh, Toe and Lift um, have not tried those out yet, but apparently those are, uh, or that is a feature on here. Uh, let's see, starter kits. I've not gotten a starter kit yet. I mean, I normally don't make a big deal about starter kits, even if the server like advertises the hell out of them. I'm much more of a, okay, I'm on the server now, let's go ahead ahead and start earning stuff kind of player uh, even though that does take a little bit longer and it does end up costing a bit more money and it could take even longer if you keep going to missions to try to earn money but you keep getting killed in the process so yeah it, it really depends but me personally I don't like asking for starter kits or anything like that uh, moving on indestructible bases which is always good walking zombies which is always good custom uh, Northwest airfield Novi lug military base Galitsky Island uh, and Belota. I can confirm that Belota is custom and Northwest Airfield is custom. I cannot confirm that the other ones are custom, but I don't see why they would lie about making these areas very custom, so yeah. Uh, added Traders, the Belota aircraft dealer. I did come across that guy the other day. He scared the shit out of me. Pro Hero and Pro Bandit, which now I'm kind of thinking that the Pro Hero and Bandit Traders might have the uh, like rocket launchers and M107s and stuff like that. I, however, do not know just yet because I'm not a hero or Bandit obviously just started playing there, so yeah. Uh, earplugs when you press U. 
I don't remember if I tried that out or not. Uh, but earplugs when you press U, group management, obviously deploy bike, suicide, just type kill me in chat, check for nearby players, AI, right click on GPS. I think that's within a thousand meters. I believe that the Firecox servers, or some of the Firecox servers that I played on in the past had that feature. I've used it a couple times when I was at a mission. I thought it was kind of cheating, so I didn't use it anymore. It really depends on how you feel about that, so yeah. Uh, we have added so many right-click options, now you can even build trees. I cannot confirm that, but that's a very interesting feature. Uh, fold and unfold script, armored SUV, I've not tried any of that kind of stuff yet. Uh, custom debug, custom kill feed, vehicles unlock after not being used for a week. That's kind of cool because I'm always tired of, you know, having to run like four kilometers or six kilometers or whatever and coming across like eight vehicles on the way but every single one of them are locked and I think that a lot of times people just get on for maybe a day or two if that and purchase a vehicle drive it around for a bit and then they just never come back to the server so that's good that they unlock after not being used for a week and then obviously save zero out after 14 days lock boxes redo after 14 so basic standard stuff as far as some of the features uh there's a few features that really stand out to me uh fully militarized that's a really good feature the 20 plus mission system that has done pretty well so far um i went to one mission and then after we got finished with the first one another one spawned in about six or seven hundred meters away i want to say and we went and did that one too so yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Another one of the features that really stand out to me, and even though it is kind of uh, typical to come across nowadays, especially with like overpox servers, uh, is the custom airfields and stuff like that. I really like it when server owners actually take the time to go in and edit the map and add extra barracks and stuff like that. Because the stock airfields, I mean, they normally have a good amount of barracks depending on which one you go to, but it's always nice to see that an admin or a server owner actually takes the time into adding more buildings into these highly militarized areas and actually give people a bit more to go around and explore and loot. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up for the very first episode of Server Spotlight. I'm not exactly sure how the format of these shows are going to go in the future. I want to try to do at least one every other week where I either talk about a Arma 2 or Arma 3 server that I feel should be getting a bit more attention and a bit more players on it. Uh, any kind of information for the server I have either displayed over the video somewhere or there will be links to everything in the description. There'll be a link to the uh, Professionals Playground website, there'll be a server IP and all that kind of stuff. And why not, I'll even go ahead and throw in the TeamSpeak info. So you guys, just go ahead and go down there into the description. Go check them out. They're a really good community. Um, they are a brand new community. I think the server population normally peaks around like between 16 and 20 players. So it's not like there's only one to two people on at all times. Obviously, you know, with most servers, they do have peak hours depending on where the server is located. I'm not exactly sure. I, I know that I could probably do a little bit more research and see exactly where the servers out of but I know that personally I get really really good ping on the server I'm normally between 55 and 70 FPS depending on where I'm at on the map so yeah and you know we're also gonna be making it our standard epoch server that we're gonna be playing on most of the time for epoch related stuff so I guess that's another added bonus if you want to come play with us and be on the same server with us then come on over and play some epoch that's pretty much gonna do it for today's server spotlight video if you liked the video leave it a thumbs up if you disliked it leave it a thumbs down and if you disliked it hop in the comment section and let me know what I can do to improve your viewing experience in the future. Uh, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will catch you in the next one.